<laughs> I just wish them well. Wish them well. Stay healthy. But other than that, I, I'm not going to tell you the rest. Uh, he's a great kid. A special player. You talk often about your teams keeping their mental stability. I mean, I guess, what did you learn about this group tonight? Yeah, I learned a lot as far as, uh, you know, and they, the guys touched on it earlier. You, know, you can learn a lot just from a win instead of just a, a, a loss. And so we knew coming in with an atmosphere like that, that there was going to be a game of runs. And um, with a special talent that they have, not just one player, but two players. I mean, Noah Farrakhan, you know, he's another special guy who can make tough shots. He, you know, he, he lives for the big moments. And so when you have two guys that are you know, gifted offensively, but also two competitors, um, you're going to get a very competitive game, which was expected. So our guys uh, did an amazing job of just having that mental stability when uh, the runs were in uh, Eastern Michigan favor were down. Uh, we could have easily just you know, fall to them. We did. Do you think um, Eastern's feistiness and everything else right from the start, do you think it that took your guys aback a little bit at first? When they no, no, not at all. Um, as a competitor, we expected a competitive game. And our guys are extremely competitive as well. But when you have a school that is like, what, 10 to 15 minutes you know, down the road, um, some of the guys that are from Detroit, uh, they have family that's in the building. They also have some of their coaches and, friend, and relatives and as well as student body. Um, you know, we get the crowd into it. You know, it just breeds confidence. It breeds toughness. And that's a tough team. So let's give a lot of credit to Coach Stan and his staff for preparing his team to come out and compete. As far as credit, I mean, what do you think about your defense versus just the money kind of hitting oh, some really right. tough shots? Yeah, uh, I, mean, I knew it come going in after watching film, and then also, you know, um, you know, I'm like some of you. I've seen this young man grow since the time when he was put out there in the, in the public news as one of the, what if I recall the best fourth grader in the country. <laughs> and, and with that, I was like, okay, well. Who was rating best fourth grade in the country? <laughs> <laughs> and then you know you just see his growth each year, and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, then he, he started getting compared to Kevin Durant, and um, you know that's hard for any young person. Uh, but give him credit as far as how he has worked on his game um, and his skill set. And so with that, um, some of the shots that he made, I wasn't surprised because I've seen him make a lot of tough shots. Uh, doing watching them in high school, watching them at AU level, and uh, now you know he, he has a group that you know breathes confidence in him, that trusts him, and uh, you know it's nothing like that. And I, I know it from my own experience. When you have a coaching staff and teammates that uh, believe in you and trust you, you know your confidence level goes up even higher. How do you think and he's going to touch the ball every time down the floor. Let's not forget that. And he he deserves to. <laughs> How do you feel about the defensive communication throughout the game? Well, first half, uh, you know, I felt we, we didn't do a good job of that. Uh, second half, we, we talked about it at halftime. So when someone asked, you know, what was the adjustments that were made, uh, some of the adjustments were uh, let's make sure that uh, we're not up on the ball screen. Let's, let's pick them up at half, uh, three point line. Uh, when we were picking them up, you know, sort of high above the three point line, that was giving like Noah and some of their guards the opportunities to get downhill to get in the paint. And that was too many paint touches in the first half. Um, so you, know, you look at how they shot the ball in the first half, uh, you know, they 53% from the field. So then in the second half, uh, they shot 38% from the field. So that's the credit to the adjustments and it's credit to our defense, our defensive disposition, and also our mindset. It's hard to be surprised by anything Hunter does anymore, but I mean, just this, the second half, eight, eight break in the field, three for three. Uh, I mean, just, I think I might be the toughest and hardest person on Hunter because I just suspect more, you know. And but give the young man credit. Uh, he he does he doesn't mind um, that I challenge him. Um, he doesn't mind being coached. Uh, he enjoys um, going out there and competing. And you know it's tough sometimes when you have you know smaller guys that's walking underneath you, um, beating on your arm. Um, and, you know sometimes your whistles, and I'm not saying the referees. <laughs> You know, didn't do a good job with their whistle because they did. But um, sometimes you have that Shaq, you know, whistle. You know, I remember the times in the NBA when Shaq was, he had a different whistle than everyone else because he was so big and stronger than all the other guys that um, I think at times 
people expect for them to dominate and expect for them to take a lot of abuse. Uh, but Hunter is, you know, he's just is working and he's doing an amazing job of leading as well. Talk about the atmosphere a couple more. Talk about the atmosphere. That was a wonderful atmosphere yes. early in the season. Just talk about the crowd, the the major the crowd, the fans. Yes. So Terrence talked about it well. The atmosphere of those two guys being veterans uh, and been a part of big games and been in tournaments where they've seen the crowds like that in the NBA style arena. And our freshmen, this is their first time. And um, I think it's Joey's first time. Not Joey, I'm sorry, um, Jalen's. And so when you have an atmosphere like that, you know, it can be different. Uh, it can sometimes, you know, get you more caught into, you know, playing for the crowd or you can you know, not trust yourself and, you know, play a little timid. Uh, but I think it's great for us to have an opportunity to play in a crowd like this in the big NBA atmosphere because it's preparing you for uh, not only just the Big Ten, but hopefully if you get an opportunity to play in a tournament, you're going to have an environment like that. And that's my why of wanting to play a game like this here in uh, Little Caesars Arena, not only just so we can get you know a lot of our Michigan fans that are around the Detroit area to come out and support, but it also inspires our young guys for those who – uh, dreaming and um, um, working hard to be playing on the NBA level, uh, this can be very inspiring to get a chance and an opportunity to uh, play in an arena like this. So with that, um, we love to do cool things and, and more importantly, give our guys the experience of an of a atmosphere like that. Joan, sort of speaking of the NBA and your perspective from all your time, uh, can, you, can you speak a little bit to Amani's skill level, 6'8", double cross, step back three kind of skill? Well, if you look at NBA games today, um, you, you see a lot of that. <laughs> you, know, you, you see uh, you know, some, some guys that get paid a lot of money uh, that make uh, shots like Imani, uh, can score similar to Imani and you know, have that size, um, to have ball skills like a big guard. And, um, you know, I feel if he has good health uh, throughout the season, and you know, keeps working, which I know he will. Uh, he has a chance, and you know, I don't know what year is going to be because I'm not going to speak for him or, <laughs> or get his coaches upset. But um, you know, I think there's a, a chance for this young man to really do some special things with the game of basketball. Appreciate your time, coach. Yeah.